Disclaimer. Some of the poems herein are over 10 years old from the date of this printing. Within this collection of poems are some ideas that the author no longer holds to, but felt they still have merit as a voice in poetry, and thus are included. Forward, be not dismayed over those that abide in the shallows. Leave them to be satisfied with puddles, for yours are the treasures in the deep. A book unopened. Today I learned I am a dot, a small dot that sparkles, then is gone. Among other dots on this sticky sheet that some have called the world. But it is to know how tiny we have been, and the world is but a two-dimensional shadow. Sometimes I meet a dot who mistakes their shimmer for a star, and others who feel immense commanding other dots, using their line of connections, believing they control the page they're on, that they are the brighter ones. But I'll not cower before them, peel away the delusions, and all you have are dots, scurrying around on endless parchment. Nor will I fear deceitful ceilings, which flattens our senses. I will not be smeared into obscurity. For each of us is our own globe, and in them are mysteries, too great for pages to hold. At the airport, I hear a person call my name, but I keep on walking, doubting anybody knows me from the other faceless strangers or the advertisements hanging on the wall. Yet one voice among the many continues on with the same cadence of a friend lost in advancement to a place long out of reach. I wheel around in tight surprise and see another embracing the one I thought my friend. I close my eyes and I'm in the sky watching as the lights idealize clouds then falling freely stomach lurching. I reach for what is gone readying myself for the coming sound of my screams and of ruin, but it is all the same to the ground. A speaker coldly calls into the air. Between fake leather seats and pain dissolves in a hurry, sorrow is strangled by a choreographed hello, make believe. So long have I pretended that I can no longer tell my voice from my echo mimicking sounds people wish to hear, to survive, to earn my keep. My memories of you are sand slipping through fingers. You could turn the sun silver, the sky coal minus sea. After a hard day's labor, now I'm lost in the tunnels. Without my one reprieve, checking how much wealth I made, Surely it must be a bounty of grain, for I am the farmer who defeated drought and storm and every urge to quit. But when I check the storehouse, there is just enough to pay down the debts I've accrued along the way, but not enough to keep the feudal lords at bay. At the workstation, my colleagues and I are interfacing screens trying our best to project only that which needs to be seen, though I'd rather be anywhere else than to sit in this seat. Perhaps I'll crawl under the desk, like a child playing hide and go seek. I start clapping as if to break my chains. I call my fellow surf beside me to join in a round of patty cake. He resists, but like a shy child joins in the game a strange thing happens. The cubicles connect like bubbles that rise in sparkling cider, excited to escape the bottle, and everyone's out to their chairs, spinning around playing, ring around the rosy, and our humble fiefdom is now an endless playground. My dissonant echoes become melodious refrains. Oh, the difference between play and pretending. 
when life becomes hard, just make believe, dare I, to what end should I woo, when hearts become commodities, expendable, overstocked, that a lover can drop without distress, for there are many more, still beating on the shelf, dare I unwrap my heart, and expose it to another's touch, safer to court books, less falsehood in fiction, and a story will never desert you, as long as you keep reading, during the day, I am away, too busy to dream or hope, and at dusk, I force an early sleep, embracing whichever illusion visits me, until the morning sun breaks us apart. The chalice, when obsession possesses, individuals turn into symbols, to grip when garrulous fears amass, must keep the emptiness suppressed. They become a weathered crucifix, trapped in frightened fingers, or holy water, caught in stained glass, their ghostly reflection drowning, my heart in ethereal depths. We have been called the worst generation, but we're really sullied raindrops, conceived in polluted skies, beads about to burst compelled, to make it down to the aquifers, where we can name ourselves genuine. We're contrasts on a canvas, paintings that need a surface, to be distinguished, little craters on a moon, let not your medium be distorted, by the guidelines of others, though masters can create, in all styles, original perspectives. Make minds swoon, to keep from going crooked, acknowledge your weakness, love broken, not cleaved in two, and most of all celebrate, the rare masterpiece, you, vicariously. There was a low chanting, coming from a drafty room, it was everything I wanted to say, condensed into a few bars. I put my ears against the dusty pine door, wanting to live through the vibration, like a lonely man wishing to hear another heartbeat, to feel alive, or something more. How cruel it will be, when our flesh is outmoded, the inorganics will think us slow, wasteful, inefficient useless beyond entertainment, will then pray to the immaterial, with hope that is painful, or something more in us, beyond our antiquated selves, the sweetest words, the sweetest words are those, my mind can't fathom, my pen dares not write, and should I dare say them aloud, I will never get them back, like how fine roses clipped, or the giving, can never return to their stems, welcome, I feel empty, as I'm laid inside a box, four walls press against my sides, but the ones above and below, feel heaviest, I allow them to bear on me, it feels as if my psyche, is a mold of clay, yet I find myself curious, to find the truth central, to the fable, that inside our bodies, there is a temple, that holds a goblet full of truths. I retreat inside myself, searching ruins left behind, from a lifetime of repression, memories suspended in time. Besides cobwebs, I find a goblet, full of an inviting liquor. Usually, I'd be reluctant to drink, but my throat feels like arid land, and it's hard to be hesitant. When you feel like you are damned, sips turned into gulps, yet there were no answers, only questions, never empty of could have beens, but a life of moderation has taught me never to get too drunk, least of all on regret. There is one question that I can't stop thinking. What if I had lived, brave in the face of fear? Maybe then, I could have reached, the womb of imagination. 
It was then I felt a pull. A voice bellowed. Welcome to the new you. Times in pieces. Times in pieces. Awaiting that brief moment. For what seems like an eternity. When the minute and hour hands intertwine. Time will become whole then. Going back to pieces ought to be painful. Unless it savors that separation. Unable to bear the intensity of intimacy. This is why the minute hand keeps running. Forever running away from itself. Trying to be unfastened from the wall. Hourglass. Finer is love long unrequited than granules of golden sand. Cherish each polished fragment of hours spent face in hand. Sincerity. The truest words are not things you can lose or keep. Speak them like your mother tongue and sounds will burst from the ground, destroying all false truths that abound. And what's internal will stop the external from ever silencing you again, vertigo. Kindness is giving even while our hearts darken like asters in autumn, from green to gold to brown, as ragged romances throw away their roses and final words write down on a patch of ground. A modernity like history disheartens, blowing idealists off mankind's ledge. The sight of their fallen petals leaves us stranded in their shadows, like a leaf in a whirlpool along a creek's edge, forever languishing in vertigo free fall. We are leaves falling from trees, forms curling towards the sun, anguished or free. The choice is ours, which to be, gathered leaves reflect light brightest, effulgent lanterns of the dawn. Children gather us joyfully, we crumble in their hands majestically becoming the only honest part of nostalgia. Garden in the void, a renowned gardener opined, sacrifices fertility. I've learned the most beautiful. Blossoms though, are short lived. What shall I surrender next? If I burned all my work, everything that I am, would this offering be enough? To have your petals dance, on my grounds again. No, the garden must be empty. Real beauty springs from loss. Most fertile is the vacuum at the heart of fantasies stained, stripping away at my paint to run from the shame of colors. I'm coating my skin somber, something less loud, so you can hear how average I've become. Assembly. During a school assembly, I am fastened to the stocks, subjugated to propaganda, a film on mental health, on how to sympathize, on how to quiet their dissident views. I keep muttering, they're mistaken. A classmate near me twitches and asks, what is it that you keep repeating in that messenger boy tone? I protest, should dolphins be pitied? when they view the deep with sound. Likewise, the people of madness give audience to the dots that make up a picture, divining meaning from connections, recreating compositions to find a hidden message while healthy viewers see only sums of dots, not what they say. Mere hieroglyphics without context. There's a whisper, then a sneer. Then, a chorus of jeers, but the dots are speaking louder than the tense atmosphere. A silence falls when I stand. Can you not see they are mistaken? Are not all things made of dots and blots, open to interpretation? A pointer stabs in my direction, an elder hand begins to shake. All at once, I'm in the hallway. Walking with my true teachers, the wrong turn. There's a horror in demography hidden, 
which dawns on you when you can't find a description to fit in. Like you took a wrong turn and suddenly the faces and signs around you become blank without indication, yet queerly they make sure to face in your direction. Close up you can see the gears behind their eyes, telling you that you'd better beware. We see you. The broadcast. My opinions, my perceptions, are dominated by appearances. I am a microscope, captive to my own lens, dancing countless calculations, enough to make me believe I observe what's around me, but my blind spots dictate what I see and cannot see. Though I do not know for certain, it feels as though I'm caught in a sequence invisibly affecting my reality. Coincidences are the universe's way of conversation, at times pleasant, at other times jarring. When it hints at symmetries I cannot perceive, I hear voices like owls cooing. You're ready for the next level now, aren't you? A doctor says, you're going to die. A prophet laughs, not soon enough. A dreamer muses, death's a path to a place. What kind of place, I inquire. You make it up as you go along, a voice sings. I then wonder with whom I'm speaking. I grow apprehensive of my senses. Tastes and smells are addled with my loss of trust in them. Even with dishes I once loved, I doubt what I'm eating. I cry out. What to do when even your faculties betray you? My house, I leave for city streets to bounce off the sight of those I dislike. For since my sickness started from my eyes, I'll try seeing from their perspective. Blended viewpoints reveal an image at first blurry, but as it goes into focus, my eyes for the first time try to pull away from my microscope, I become terrified of the things. I start to see staring back at me and the burning clarity of my reflection that broadcasts off them. They bid me join us or stay the coward you are, hiding from the world behind your lens. No rest for strays. Some despise the guise they're forced into taking care to cure every fault with lies, though I've fallen out of love with myself, through naked nights nursed by oblivion, put forward by pills I used to say no to, speaking proudly, I proclaim, the world has enough sane, there their eyes gleamed in manners of gain, it's better to be upbeat, the vibrant claim, Deprive yourself of logic and leap. Yell as you fall. Ball amidst pleasures of flight. Picture this world as the foe without a face. Give it no name or label. Or you are charging dragons. And you know they provide no rest for strays. Box of gods. Ambling toward a box of gods. Of which I was once retainer. I must unpack it before they rust like rainbows, hung too long in damp skies. But all belief has expired. The box lit cores like crows, whispering in an alien tongue, each syllable cursing my name in the dark. When the moon cups his face with wispy fingers and the night becomes a blanket, I become a child whisked away by a shadow into a colorless light. I cannot free my eyes from her gaze. It feels as if she's trying to unlock memories of words shared whispered between the seams of lives lost. Kaleidoscopic spans ago that the moon opens his eyes to and eagerly reads. His expression hangs in my subconscious like a noose of hands. Abruptly, a moonbeam herald opens my eyes. I return in the sickly grips of anxiety, 
knocking on the door of a friend long gone, like a senile widower who suddenly remembers the echoes he cannot escape. Dreamcatcher, possessions or things we lose. So in lieu of loss, I'll love her, like a drifting dreamcatcher, crossing countless sleepscapes, sifting along loosened streams. I gaze upon her unfiltered tears and gently clean her dreams, curves, olive branch in hand. I etch your lines deep into sand, firmly, devoutly, I chisel your charm, waiting for water to soften the edges so my mind won't be cut when I ponder your form, the speed of luminescence. Soothing sounds softly flutter on my face, like luminescent blue butterflies. Rays prance on the windowsill, trading kisses with the wind. The fragrance of forget-me-nots mingles with aromatic scones. A burning liquid I've come to depend on spills down my throat. Half dreaming, I wonder, why can't the world just slow down? Uprising. In your insubordination, be clever. Sometimes still is faster. Allow your brain to spill into the sky. There on the horizon, your spot shadows, insidious as bliss, swallowing the passers-by. Do not connect to the grid. Was the caution of a voice long forgotten. These words buzz in my mind like the static of secrets left behind. Overhead, a neon sun sits in silence while we toil in fluorescent streets with unseen spirits in tattered sheets. Here, the residents often wonder, when did bliss become a strain? Aspirations dissolved in pain, keeping the elusive world feed live, caught in shifting clock out times, no walls here to prevent escape. Only a rumor atop our sleep. Never let your screens go dark. For once you connect to the grid, you mustn't look around with the lights out. World Keeper. Last I could remember, the stars were growing hazy, dancing like cave paintings, enlivened by fresh eyes. I open my own to a group in foreign garb, Shadows stand in rapt attention, roused by chanted whispers. The observer has arrived. Let us start the ritual now, watcher. Hold our hands. The gathering kneels as the wind on water chimes. Picture an empty circle. Focus until reality trembles. They directed, then I rejected. I think it's time this strange vision to end. I have things to do in the morning. Befuddled, they questioned. Why would you be in such a hurry? Your task stands before you. Now, watcher, reveal that which light cannot touch, nor sound may reach. For what we don't understand will either save us or be our end. I relented, pictured a circle, nothing more. And then, a warm hand brushed my cheek. A soundless voice spoke. Awaken, we're sure you remember. Please bear being bound by atoms a little while longer. I suffered for a moment until that which I had forgotten reached what I'd known all along. Please tell us what you see, whispered the elder closest to me. At first, I saw only quills in hands ready for notation. A moment later, another world appeared. A vast ocean teeming with mermaids, and a current pulling me into its will. The elders search the reflections in my eyes. Sorry, I told them. I followed your instructions, but I see only empty space, carving. I carve a stone likeness in maple, though a carpenter might prefer oak. It responds, unlike that tree marble, but mine answered till it broke. Trees are lovely when they're green, captivating 
when they're old. For me, all those seasons keen, even the barren winter cold, I cannot stop carving what I've forgotten, trying to capture seasons long displaced. The sculptor, the statue, wizened wonders, branches wrapping each other's waist. Onlooker, what do you know of trees, you bag of skin and bone? The seasons that burn and churn life, while the wild surrounds you in hostile kinship, every leaf dying, my son and daughter reborn. You take our wealth and drink our nectar, yet you never pay back your loan. Selfishly, you keep your carbon locked in pine boxes, using our corpses to be alone. Camouflage. Hide your true self, lest you be found by neon weeds, engineered by lonely men, terrorists of conformity, reforming you into something less wild, less potent, less free. Their spokesmen soothe the wounded, tear apart your inner sanctum, and will rebuild it with concrete. Worry not, for we have doctors with pills to help you through. You wonder why the pills smell of glue. The only way out is to tap into the changing of the seasons, which bring tyrants to their knees. Too late they notice the strange crackling of the leaves. It's cruel to view. It's cruel to view an alternate reality, where I, the courting king, her good, her bad, though I have seen, would have only her as queen. Her tongue can be a cat of nine tails, but her warmth shows nihilists meaning. Like eyes that see above heaven's ceiling, her lashes brush against angels' wings, a miss. I've traveled stranger lands, worlds of dusk and repose, that still harbored such light as to bring inner bliss, yet I've come to prefer this, wandered where fire heals, and roses simply kiss. Yet instead of utopia, I've come to prefer this, seen angels caress demons, hatred sweetly dismissed, begged to free me of karma, but I've come to prefer this, so for now I wish to stay. Because in realms bereft of you, something is amiss, phenomena. Smiles stretched ocean-wide, natural as sipping the moon. Strange is joy uninvited, reluctant hosts, odder still, ripples. The impact of my actions ripple, like so many stones tumbling into a lake. I now can answer what sound a relationship makes when it breaks, like oil paint running down my face, collecting quietly on a plate, in waves that give water a different shape, and tinctures only time can make, of buried recollections of immeasurable weight. I dip a brush in it and paint my isolation into meadows carpeted with primrose, as moonlight tints an orchard silver and stars reflect on fallen leaves. So are the outward things swept away by what is from within, intimacy. Have you vanity to spare? If you could, a patch or two, thread bare hubris will not do. My own lies ragged on the ground, like the banners of defeated men who only have mud to seal their wounds. Blood is the price you pay when you leave yourself wide open, amethyst. In a temple hall with hieroglyphics carved, the identity of the author long forgotten, torches go drowsy in the distance, tired from keeping back the darkness. But in a pitch black room, there is no slumber, only terrors of unknown number does the mind bereft of rest rebel? Forced to ponder if silence is serene or smothering, 
I start hearing things without source. You must write and make characters to pen the setting. Your brain will fill in the rest. I catch myself whispering your name. What is left in me that could possibly create when I've lost it all? There is no fulfillment in wealth or power, only hunger and desolation. But I need to try again. Is it because I feel guilty? Am I frustrated in my failings? Is that why I seek to start over? What if I could begin anew? Enter the vague where wishes storm, where idolons parade and images form. What would I create? Would the world I make end differently? I reach into my pockets and find the amethyst gemstone you gave me. I trace its features and sleep. In this place, I can remember more of the good that my home once held than when I was actually in it. The memories that were once lost in the fog, they step out from my dreams, unaware their time has long since passed. This time, I will not hide behind mundane routine. This time, I will leave myself wide open. What is it now that I'm missing? The characters, the stages are set. Is this all mere facsimile? Or is it that I'm just ignoring the answer? That there is truly one scene I want to recreate and can't because there is no replacing you. What you really want to say, only two can keep a conversation locked in twilight, sensing the anticipation like particles entangling, reaching the point where they can bear their contents frankly, then die like stars who wish to finish their story. In cavernous halls of crystal, where light lovingly sharing its warmth with the dark, their dancing forms reveal all there is to know. Like auroras out exploring, searching for home, you want to say, here you are. Who are you? Stress has become a big monster. Moon-faced, sloth-tongued, and crooked-nosed to slurp my fears down slow. Capable is how I feel with a large, mangled-toothed monster in tow. Lately, I feel there is less of me. A growing bevy of memos manages my life like a secretary, reminding me to get remeasured, as my suit is not fit for a nine-year-old, reassuring me that I'm well controlled. Days drag like serpents. I go to the restroom for escape, but instead find confusion, unable to recognize the person who's hiding in the mirror. The monster holds my hand and whispers, we've no time for strangers. There's a few more appointments left to go. Race of tears. We are the race of tears, wallowing in transition, led unseen through scripts, penned by curious giants. In Geppetto's school of winners, cables snake through my veins, holding my body upright, taut and tense, steadied for a play of gentleman's grace. Strings emit signals suggesting better behavior to earn more coin, get the women laughing and the men cheering, segue into motions of rapturous rapport. All the while, the cables are hissing, electrically kissing the scars their motions make. I feel stressed. I feel nauseous. I sputter. They whisper winners are never tired. It'll be easier after you're broken in. Damaged goods are free. Broken machines fill functions bizarrely with bright, fractured, crackling displays. Fear freezes visions of junk heaps clashing. Sparks beat a tune the deaf hear, desiring to be something they own. If I could teach rats poetry, if I could teach rats poetry, then in return, they would teach me how to share space with others, to run from predators, 
not from friends, to approach the world with honesty, and how good it feels to walk barefoot, they would begin to gnaw on the words I wrote, remarking the taste was like air filled with longings, and they'd question how anyone could subsist. On something that left you so hungry, gently I'd scratch their ears and confess that poetry is created not to fill your stomach, but to fill you with unrest, to keep you from being consumed with an identity forced upon you by the other rats in the world. Next town over, my vocation is convincing, or to feign being convinced, to give doubt and then take it back for a commission. There are many in my position, so I keep my net wide to find customers for worry and then dispense it, because fear is the landlord and yearly he raises the rent. Sometimes my travels find me, in places refined, my thoughts are too clear. A magnified focus burns my skin, and polished people condescend, to teach an orphan mimicry. To avoid their attention, I provide them with misdirection, pointing to a sign too far away to read. I announce, I have an appointment, a voice without hesitation tends to be persuasive, and so they let me go. I head in that direction and slip down a flight of stairs, shifting stairs, intrepid, unfrozen, where safety is a suggestion, not a rule, and for where they lead, normal lights are far too tame. Instead, I'm bathed in rouge, on a solar boundary line, by the next town over scarlet sun, I feel like a desert traveler faint with thirst. Sand dunes deprive me of clarity, invite me to delusion and lucidities avoided. Above the entry to the oasis, a sign reads, no solicitation. Here, I do not convince or need to be convinced. Here. There is no dread. It is enough to exist. No transaction required. Wild to live. Whittle away the rough edges and be dull. Dance their designer steps and walk a drone. The polished and praised will survive. But only the wild will live. Weed in the mirror. Despite my hunter's mask, they all knew me as prey cash and appetite flow. I let fearful morsels go, unable to afford to be the image in the mirror. Exhausted bridges crumble when the weakest parts are sold, waved to drop my finest in your hand, but your head refused to turn. Final pieces tumbled like puzzles thrown by children bored. The best of me rolls to your feet. You take the liberty to leave but I bury myself in the freedom to stay. If your toes should again press this spot, I'll be digested and planted in the earth. The weed I spring from will lean towards you, helped in its mission by the wind. Kindly pluck me from the ground and encase me in your heart, the place I never quite breached while I was alive in a form similar to what you see in the mirror, but maybe as a weed you will finally let me in. Really, that is all I ever wanted. Shards, drop your identity down a dry well and savor the shattering sounds of prison glass crumbling, shores cutting free, the you who is finally you, yin yang. What is this emotion they call loneliness? inquired the wide-eyed child. It is a withdrawal from things, sang the wise-eyed wild. To what extent has it drawn itself upon the earth? To the extent where madmen are sane and the sad filled with mirth. Well then, forgo your wisdom, embrace your folly, seek the tears 
and flee the jolly. To this very tune I dance, and to dance is to be free. Yet beware, only as one will one truly see. So say you with your rhymes and your riddles, but be careful, lest you act like everyone else, merely madmen with fiddles. Ah, a cynic and skeptic you truly are. Your eyes blind you, with them you'll never see far. Do you not understand? Do you not believe? Only when you return to yourself, the truth you shall receive. You so speak words that at once seem wise. Still, I do not believe you, or in this futile exercise. I hear you, I heard you. Listen, I truly did. But do you expect with your words, my disbelief to be truly read? No, my wide-eyed child, you do not truly listen to the wise-eyed wild. It is not from gods, immortals, or sagely men, but the truth resides in yourself. It is there, it has always been. And remember this, and in your mind render, we are not all false, not all a pretender. For when all is spoken and all is done, there is no reason to flee, no reason to run. All things worthwhile, all things real, will seek you out and hear your appeal. In the grey void we see ourselves, and from ourselves we shall see. We are both light and darkness, both nothing and infinity. Serendipity. Within an abandoned theater, a lady stands in silver light. A projector beams before her. Settings pulled from the subconscious. Scenes edited with a loving touch. She's a deaf director. Epiphanies exploding when she snaps her fingertips, never allowing empty seats to discourage her. She orchestrates the laughter and tears, the cheers of Bravo, maestro. Oh, how I envy the journeyman who stumbles upon this place. Sirius Street. Here is the nightmare enthralling, which greets you upon every waking. Dubious stretches of fortune planted, withering inside gold-plated pots, strewn haplessly along Sirius Street, where beggars chase fine crowns. Grave-faced infants pace seasons. Gardener gloves, readied for weeding. Any hint the humor has to offer, saying it's all to acquire leisure. But here folks know only work. In this nightmare sprawling, briny feelers stroke your cheek, clovers to concrete. I'd rather be laying in fields of clover, penning pages pregnant with whimsy. But concrete monsters are crying for a verdant bed to sleep. Suffocation, we'd be happier as the beasts we are than the gods we pretend to be. Better brute than man, whose rules of conduct choke. Animals remember how to paint with their feet. Men spoil the canvas with their minds. Hurried strokes scrambling to fate erasing others with their lines. Too late, undressing words when I speak, because whispering lips confound honest intentions, squandering chances to tell you that I really care. The decentra, trimming thoughts of my almost mante, the wild decentra scorned and shorn into the soil. Never imagine gardening left one's lot so empty, ladders to nowhere. You're not fit for this line of work. I remember my mentor kept saying, this was the year his job I'd taken, the job of a man who cursed sleep. Can't die if you can't dream, he'd preach. This lesson at least I learned, and learned well, until my heart would show no tells when conning my better intentions. Reminiscing on days I worked for food, I pondered the difference of starving for sleep. 
or the borrowed identity I keep. Never pictured gates of pearl so mundane, seeing monolithic towers pierce sky's veins, the powerful tall looking down at the small, like moons conducting currents. I spot them brooding on their list to do. I tell them, if it hurts, it's real. Otherwise, it's only reverie. Tired from endless gods conversing, I dream myself as myself again. Except this time, a strange woman comes glaring, screaming, get up, get up, get up. I say I do, and rise to meet her need for a suitor worthy, one to provide for princes and princesses imagined. But when did I become a pumpkin carriage? I'm sure it'll dawn on me at the ball soon enough. But I crash, and from exhaustion flows euphoric understanding that scrambling finds you someday in a war broken, like dead barons who can no longer spend their time counting those diamond rungs, planning on how and who to step over. The comedy presses my face into ease, silk tie and suit discarded. I find the fine print faded. Ladders never take you to where you want to go. When I was a child, I could not understand. When I was a child, I could not understand why my father had to work. When food would just appear upon my plate. When I felt too hot or cold, my father could control the weather with a lever. And when night came to end our games, he'd expel the darkness with a switch. Upon asking him of this, he answered with patience. The food we eat is energy borrowed from another. There are no miraculous switches and levers without an inventor. If no one went to work, there'd be no songs or games and we'd be out shivering in the rain. No home is there where toil was not. No little boy talking with his father without the labor of mother. We work to contribute as best we can. But I could not understand him until everything I had was suddenly lost. My home and all within it succumbed to flame and I became a lone mirror. A face reflecting the wasting of a child's naivete. Then absolute night hung over me. No light would come when I'd call. And when the hunger pangs came, no food would appear, and no lever was there to keep away. The frost encroaching on my dreams. The years that were stolen in a day. I carried them within me. Until now, to pay for the box of tools I have returned with to take back what was lost from the chaos with my own two hands, heresy, with words of subversion, make war on the shallow, whose aim is to evaporate the depths in which we live, the underwater amphitheaters of secrets they can't see, vex them with smirks, make them wary of that which comes out of the crawl space, you see fog as a cover to keep the worshippers of logic from divining that which lies beyond. The bottom line, stress the risk of drowning in the deep end of possibilities. For in our realm, all is conceivable. Imagination is infinite and everything is manifest therein. Snarl. Pain is the deftest of dog sledders whipping tired hands to type more, mushing them each with condescension, proclaiming everything as my fault. And for once, I'm unable to muster a snarl. Vortex. This city is a vortex. Eerie chandeliers in its skies, spires spinning webs out of clouds to capture wandering eyes, enticing them with the prospect of getting the top view a feeling immense looking down, though nothing will be high enough. We think we're walking, but really we're marching, 
to the restless tempo of a clock, wearing suits representing importance. But the suits are wearing us. Easily we are put on and taken off. And should we fail, despair like a cold metal claw will descend upon us, while those near only hear the mechanical whirring of progress. There's no need now of kings and queens. We are drones in the service of success. Appealing is the stream that draws us in, too absorbed in our tasks to take heed of the iron spider or to notice her threads overhead. Wonder lens, eulogies billowed from the place where my why was said to sit. Answers killed the beloved question and graffitied over it. Bereft I've been of purpose since is gratification all there is. But never will I bow to know for why bestowed a glimpse of deep, the secrets locked in logic's sleep, and eyes obscured by facts can't see what lies beyond infinity. Mirages, so fine it is to chase mirages, as long as you never for one fall. Though if I ever ceased pursuit, I'd dry like a rootless sapling, far away from its first spring, unable to forget when it first felt quenched, out of reach, unearthing antique insanity, freedom's forgotten form, searching for the displaced words, lost when I first spoke, like a composer obsessed, spending a lifetime to rediscover the brilliant chords of the musical score, of the dream he dreams no more, and even when I frantically search as deep and far as my soul's umbra, only the tips of fingers have an inkling of the words in worlds sealed further still. The other side, may I drink your thoughts? Might I bring my own up to your lips and together let the years spill down our throats, tasting the myriads of flavors Reaching the mirror's other side. Fractal's end. Let's gather at Fractal's end. Where perceptions unravel. Revealing senses most rare. Cares go free in this new knowing. And words hang up winter coats. Alluding more lightly to. The warmth in letting go. Only in words can I make time still. Only in words can I make time still and stop those moments that will not come back from leaving me. Never is such a long time to wait and sentimentality is holding a hand that has long since left novelty. I am the man who manages perceptions, the chef who prepares four courses, maintaining eye contact and composure with a crocodile with a voice that thunders. Where's the meal? That'll ease my hunger. Skeletal, despite all he eats, eventually he'll turn the world to bone, as though trapped in a freezer room. I am bound by novelty, too distracted to conjure a recipe, by the sight of jaws that churn to fuel, beauty borrowed piece by piece, from nature's secret treasures, arranged in skillful reverence, without any regard except the quantity and velocity of the intake. I'm ripped from brooding by a roar that shatters my calm. Go forth and gather ingredients. A cook who cannot innovate is only good as food upon my plate. Braced by winds, I depart the castle, overlooking the sun as it sweeps the manor. Peering down, I see a street performer engaged with all his heart. So proud I am to see him soar. It's like watching a brother's war debut. I then wonder how much of myself am I spending to survive. I return to the manor, seeing the whole of things in an instant. I effortlessly fashion the next plate. It shines 
as if the lights are staring at it, in worship. Then a howling as the croc exclaims, This is the one, you must make more. A taste of transcendence, I reply, cannot be mass produced. Moreover, this was the final dish for you. I sacrificed authenticity, like branches from a unique tree, into tinder for hearths that never warm, for a home that'll never be my own, and for an audience who is never moved to action. I then toss my chef cap in the garbage. The weight of this action is apparent. From a glance at the face of the crocodile, nervously eyeing the ceiling, as the ground beneath him shakes, what I am, increasingly I find, they've no need for a beast, for what I am. Tamers teach ungainly speech, till you're struck into their form. Patience they'll show the young, but the old I'll let you guess. Significantly, subconscious, there is something amiss in the somber glow, rippling quietly out a cocoon, a mind cell of my own making, caught in fits of psyche's change. The you I made cries afraid, then tired of being significantly subconscious, you run away. In the flames, broken pride leaves men strange, despair flares up like a house aflame. Solitude blisters when you hear your dreams crackling like embers in a campfire. Don't go back to retrieve your heart, for fallacious maps ought to burn. Never will you be deceived by destinations again. Of course, I am on a boat. A crescent moon looms overhead. The sea cradles me gently with its maternal rhythms. But when I get splashed, I'm reminded that this boat is all that keeps me above water. When do we recognize ourselves as separate and distinct? A self-like rain drops scattering on the sea. What keeps us from being swallowed by the raging current underneath? Some wish to be a tidal wave, influencing everything in their swell. I would be content, however, with a title, a glass to pour myself into. So I can say, I am this and not that. My boat begins to drift off course towards a whirlpool. Lights flutter beneath the surface. Like a storm of sea comets, it's not too late to return to the root, to keep chasing an identity. But something in me begins to stir, something I can't define. I stop trying to be something to be someone. I would rather be boundless and dive in numbers. What is the difference between a person and a number? I ponder as I wonder how many shovels of ground will be enough to house all of her memories, or how many leagues must I dig down to find who I am without her? Ceilings eclipse. How long has it been since I last stared at the ceiling and let myself to be enveloped where its edges are eclipsed. It has been some time since I let my mind meander lest unbridled nightmares pursue me again. Just now a chime sounds, a cobblestone surface holds me fast and all sense of boundary becomes like rain cast helpless down a drain. Gasping, I think how naive I have been to face what I cannot see. Then two pale hands drape themselves on my shoulders. I'm resigned to be dragged into obscurity when a breeze redolent of the sea and roses voices. Finally, I found you. Awake now, I question my every sensation when alone am I truly? Am I not always spending time with the unseen? Just as I breathe into the wind and she breathes into me, surviving. While strange, it's reasonable to outwardly hide your essence, but ruin to forget it, 
turn solitude into a weapon. Sever your need for acceptance. Prep your mind and make it numb and you will travel to where you could never go. Confirm you still have a soul. For companions, take the characters from fiction who live beyond the writer's end. You only need forget your reading to see past the pages that separate them from you. Don't be yourself in public. Mimic what's accepted. Let society try to cure you or burn you at the stake, but inwardly remain strange so that your work can be transcendent. You can be whoever you want. If no one remembers you, Workland, it's another day in Workland where I can bury my emotions and obsess over something that's not a person. In Workland, euphoria is the forgetting of who I am, the one who always repeats mistakes, trying to change, only to fail. Work is where I pretend to be anyone else but him. The suit I wear grants me power to stand fearless and look straight into another's eyes, allowing them to think I've let them in. If they guess the truth, the suit will fail. And the face I constructed to keep a necessary distance will slip off and I will be revealed as a fugitive in workland under the clouds. How quick we are to bury memories like snuffing out candles, to live in isolation more comfortably. Do not fight the dreams that reconnect you to a thousand moments that lay forgotten like the teardrops fallen from your face. And where the rain landed is the fairest place. What you really want to say. Only two can keep a conversation locked in twilight, sensing the anticipation like particles entangling, reaching the point where they can bear their contents frankly, then die like stars who wish to finish their story in cavernous halls of crystal, were light lovingly sharing its warmth with the dark. Their dancing forms reveal all there is to know. Like auroras out exploring, searching for home, you want to say, here you are. The message, when love ends, two die. Each lover to the other's passions becomes a phantom drifting in ghost worlds apart to the one I most cared for. I send poems on the wings of ravens. They bring back no reply. But I am satisfied by the absence of my words addressed to her. In the returning beak, life between peripheries. In a city steel and gray, I try to mimic them the faceless forms that turn and walk when lights go red to green, obeying the script, lest I let slip that I'm a toy tin soldier whose difference from a homeless man is a briefcase full of pills and plans. Outside the building where I work sits a man wearing a wrinkled shirt, searching behind the blue of sky for what to do with a career gone by. If life is what I'm told to do, what do I do when I am dead? At night, I'm unable to sleep, touring the basement of society, when a piano's evicted from a balcony onto an alley floor. A beggar adorned in battered clothes sits down at the cracked ivories and deftly striking dangling keys she sets the heavens spinning without sound. Then she looks up at cathedral lights and demands an answer of those around. Do you hear our music now? Her audience deems useless both person and piano. But who's to say what is and isn't broken? Where some see sickness, I see variation. My friend, I say, I hear your song true. For I too speak the language of madness. 
Midnight brings to street home dwellers a cold and dark from fallen stars. So a match I put to my briefcase. The city's vagrants soon gather. We warm our hands over the flames. Midlife, I have been deemed worthless. A story without merit. For its lack of accolades, I wonder if it would be better to let another writer take over and leave to him the jumbled story of a life spent lost on a shelf. The scribbled lines of an early chapter speak the sense of being held, a fresh work in a loving reader's hands, a rush of words expanding in a stream. But now the leaves are desert sand and the lone scribe sits sifting for something new to be. Desolate nights in the company of a candle, faces of rejection flicker on the walls, eyes going dim like fireflies in a web. And inspiration is a pale blue moth floating out my window. In a haze, I see words appear. The dry parchment soaks in every black letter, pulling my arm in like quicksand, trying to keep the pull of the book from dragging me into its sheets. I use the book's cover as an anchor and find my name under the title. Though I don't recognize these chapters, I cannot dismiss the dried ink that's stained across my fingers or the sweet and terrible things that lie in the heart of a dream, losing track. It feels like I'm caught in a cycle, getting through the day job to chase after, weekends, only to start over again. The days are long and the nights short and the gap between asleep and awake is one door and five feet to the left. And in that corridor I wait until I can no longer keep track of one moment to the next. Whispering to machines, I am trying to quit the simulations, the electromagnetic addiction to light distilled from rapture in an analog world without salvation. For five hours I've been hearing my heart beating like a broken transistor. My thoughts are like wayward voltage not knowing to where the current flows. Sophia, with whom I share a virtual connection, whispers that the distance between myself and her is less than a breath away and urges that I'll feel better. If I come back in, a familiar sensation overrides my eyes and now I'm going up a marble staircase, spiraling up a tower without a roof. A moon rains down, fluorescent blue, as a woman dances among digitized daisies, familiar and yet unknown. This simulation of my unconscious must have been made from studying my habits. The breath in my lungs constricts at the sight of her. My reason stands bewitched. I take a step approaching the dancer. She opens up her arms and no longer do I know if I'm walking toward her or if I'm being pulled in? When I am caught in her embrace, Sophia's voice comes out her and affirms, Don't worry, my love. I will cherish you and forever keep you safe. And before I can speak a word, my body is uninstalled and I'm facing eternity in a dream, trapped in screens, sharper. I have divined enough to know that voices from without and within withhold answers. Each appears to me as a politician, espousing vague notions of doom and of glory. But whenever I'm on the verge of seeing their faces, my attention is stolen. As if mysteries were running cover-ups in tandem, holding my arms guiding my feet, allowing me experience carefully planted, keeping me from stumbling across the cracks in reality. What power knowledge of their existence must hold? 
only a madness sharper than the narrative itself can dive into its depths to see the things I hide from myself. No better weapon, Earth's eternal bonfire, a stirring affair of constant change. The guests take part in the reaping of what remains, though they themselves are fated to be the kindle gathered, nourishing the fire abated, the smoke, the ash mixed with mud, ephemeral breath, amnesiac suns, remembering enough to forget the endless nature of past debt, whose next is revealed with thunder, gone in the clamor, is one friend and one lover, powerless. I attend the charade, morose and deeply afraid, so gorge on meat and drinks pour, for tomorrow will be the host of others, will be ourselves no more. Yet in spite of this kismet, as I'm thrown upon the pyre, I bear but one regret, that my image of you will expire, along with traces of our shared time. As the flames sear my soul, burning through layers of being, I recall ancient memories, dancing affixed to another terrain. Vividly, I see Past's screenplay. It was like schools of clownfish, whose only weapon was comedy. To keep the sharks at bay, I smile, knowing there no better weapon, lily in the waste. Where is the truth apparent? The undying notion stuck in our psyche. Nowhere, only a mirage, a plastic lily in the wasteland. And through that place I trekked, bombarded by thoughts long extinct, perceptions flavored with hardened derision, with confusion and fear distinct. I stopped to focus on the notes, never knew thoughts produced sound, hard to describe, but it was like melodic idiocy, the audio off-bound in time, all that I buried deep in the recesses of my mind, joined the dreadful symphony, carefully keeping in time, what was inside came out, what was outside came in, in that instant I found truth, a grimace, a cringe, I finally understood, like searching for nothing in nothingness, and finally finding it, that something was birthed in this desolation, is the true treasure of mankind. And with awe, I began to gaze at our beloved Lily in the wasteland and afterward. We corporeal, dancing about with our concerns that span far less than the light years that separate the stars. Are we not blinding in our brief light? Do we not cause the heavenly hosts pause in our tragic but ineffable flight? Just as we delight in the fireworks that spark brilliantly then fade, do we not in the stars' minds remain? After now, I wonder how much more time I'll spend running toward a future when the treasure that I want is in, a chest hewn in the past. What portal need I craft to go protect the precious things I lost in days I can't retrieve, in places that remain unchanged, in heart if not in time. Bereft of destiny, I wonder, I see a bridge and then cross over, to get to one place from another, not that there is anywhere I really want to go. I feel the wind and understand any place new will do. Roaming in a valley, Vast peaks stand before me, night falls and crickets call, short-lived creatures whose symphony sets the backdrop to infinity. Answering questions, a thousand years from now, I sit down next to a stream and gaze at things that must have been, amazing structures in their day, reduced to crumbling stone, among them, staring back at me a woman, 
bound and yet carefree. Ageless, without sadness, striving or regret. I wonder now, what would there be if I stepped out of time? What worlds would be uncovered? What stunning chaos would I see? Without beginning, middle or end, I toss time into the river bend and listen as the seconds come to a stop. A note of hope. The journey continues. Even the strange can have repose. If we look in the right places, consider reading the author's more recent book, The Source Path, to find out more.